how to soundproof a living room, I'm going to use the four step soundproofing method to show you how to soundproof this lounge diner. First of all, you have to address the main cause of the problem. And for this lounge diner, it has three main causes. What we mean by main cause, we mean it doesn't matter what soundproofing you do, doesn't matter how singing or dancing the wall clip system or whatever you decide to put on the separating party wall or the chimney stack or the RSJ or this window wall, unless you address the main cause of the problem, the noise will still come through and you still feel unsettled, uncomfortable, feeling like you want to move. The first main cause is to soundproof this RSJ, which is sitting on the separating party wall. We need to open that up, sound deaden it, because the sound is resonant that RSJ, that hollow void. The sound is resonating in the hollow void and it's transmitting through the steel to the rest of the property. If you've ever felt that your neighbor noise is just all around you and you're hearing it in every aspect of your house, that's because you potentially have some sort of main cause like this, which needs to be soundproofed. Another main cause would be the hollow stud wall perpendicular, which is actually in the bedroom above. So this stud wall here, is above this RSJ. If we go upstairs and we go into this bedroom here, this is a hollow stud wall. So this wall here is hollow. So if we open that up, the sound resonates in that hollow stud wall and shoots downstairs through the ceiling down below. So if you've done all the soundproofing in this room, you've treated that window wall, the alcoves, the fire back, the chimney stack, the other alcove, the other chimney stack, you've even insulated the suspended floor void and insulated the bedroom floors, you're still going to hear the noise from the neighbours. If you sat there and you think, oh, I've done all this soundproof and I can still hear the noise come through, that's because the sound is resonating in that hollow stud wall and shooting down through the ceiling. Before even visiting this property, I spoke to the homeowner on the phone and I said, put your ear on this wall and tell me what you hear. Now when they put their finger in one ear and they put their ear against this stud wall perpendicular, it's the wall separating the front and back bedroom, they could hear all the noise from the neighbor's living room diagonally down below. So the neighbors were making noise in their living room diagonally down below. The noise was coming up at an angle, resonating in that hollow stud wall and then shooting down through that living room ceiling on our homeowner side. Again, it's one of those areas, it doesn't matter what soundproofing you do, unless you address that hollow stud wall perpendicular, the noise will still come through. Another main cause of this lounge diner is the suspended floor void. Here you can see holes in the structure around the joists. If you have holes like that, then you might hear kids screeching, you might hear a TV presenter's voice, or maybe you know when your neighbor's on the Zoom call or your neighbor's having a FaceTime and you, you can hear the person that your neighbor's speaking to on the phone, then then that would be a clear sign that you have holes in the structure. Noise will come in through the suspended floor void, it will resonate in that suspended floor void, and again, that's why it's a main cause. It means it doesn't matter what soundproofing you do in this room, doesn't matter how thick that wall system is, if you don't address that suspended floor void, then the noise will still come through. You'll be sat there thinking, ah, oh, I can still hear everything because you haven't addressed the main cause of the problem. Moving on to step number two in the four step method, it's the direct noise path. And this is what everybody's trying to sell you, a solution to the direct noise path, some fancy clip or panel system to the direct noise path to reduce that noise coming through directly. And here the direct noise path for this room is the alcoves, the fire back, the chimney stack, the other alcove, the other chimney stack, the other fire back, and the other alcove. But what a lot of people don't realize is down here beneath the floorboards and that area above the ceiling is actually still the direct noise path. So you have to cut open that ceiling, you have to cut open that floor to get to the whole of the direct noise path. Step number three in the four step method is the indirect noise path. And this is where we're considering noise coming around. This window wall is a key indirect noise path where the noise is just as loud on that window wall as it is this alcove, this far alcove. And that's because the neighbors have an extension at the back there and they have an RSJ creating open plan living and the noise is resonating in their RSJ and shooting it all the way to this window wall. So this window wall needs a good soundproofing solution on it. Otherwise, when our homeowners sat there in the chair, this is a wall where their ear is closest to, and it's been hammered by the noise from the neighbor's extension. Other indirect noise paths will be this window wall, insulating that suspended floor, so insulate back between the joists, insulate the bedroom floors back from the conflicting party wall, and going over the ceiling to reflect your noise back in, but also adding mass to the ceiling to reduce that noise coming over. Step number four in the four step method is the fixes and fittings. And here we're talking about the plug sockets, the light switches, the skirting, 
all put back in a way which doesn't compromise the new soundproofing. We don't want to cut a great big hole in the wall for the socket. We make sure the skirting's isolated. We remove the coving because the coving's channeling the noise around the room. Making sure the fires and the surrounds all go back in a way which doesn't compromise the new soundproofing. Also consider finished flooring such as carpet and things like that to reduce the sound energy bouncing around the room after the soundproofing installation. You follow the four step soundproofing method and you will considerably reduce the noise in your home. Like this lady, she didn't use this lounge before. She had nine months or so just not using this lounge. After she followed the four step method, she now uses that lounge all the time. She has the soundproofing of a detached house in this lounge downstairs. If you think you've got what it takes to DIY soundproof your own home, then click the link in my bio. Take the quiz and I'll send you a free copy of my book, The Noise Free Home.